Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are gonna be working on three different things. We are gonna start with a little seed planting. I've even got my tray all prepped and ready to go. We're gonna be planting some anise hyssop, which is an amazing perennial, wonderful herb. Here's Russell, he's wanting all the love. And when we're done with that, we are going to head to the Hartley and we're going to reroute that Tratoscantia. I just showed it to you guys in a recent tour of the plants in there and it needs some attention. When that's done, we are gonna head out to the garden and we're gonna do a little flower bed clean out. I'm thinking the sun might even break through the clouds today. It's trying so hard and I see little patches of blue. I'm hopeful. The high is 47 today and our 10 day forecast looks awesome. We have days in the 50s, so I'm ready. I'm ready to get out there and get some work done. Okay, so the anise hyssop, botanical name is Agastache or Agastache, depending on your region. We say Agastache funiculum. It's a wonderful perennial plant. I mean, the pollinators love it. It looks really pretty in a flower border, really great for cut flower bouquets. It blooms for a really long time, like months out of the year. So it's just a lot of color, a lot of interest for a long time. And you can use it medicinally as well, if that's something you want to do, or just as flavoring in some of your cooking projects. I want to say that there's what, between like 20 and 30 varieties, like a species of Agastache out there. Don't quote me on that, but I think there's a lot of them. And each one of them will sort of boast something a little bit different. Um, now this one does self seed. It's not a tremendously long lived perennial. So it's kind of nice that it self seeds a little bit. That way um, you will always have some in your area because you'll have you know new ones popping up. If you are really good about mulching, it will not self seed as much. So I don't have any problems with it seeding you know, where we have it out in our garden. I mean, just a little bit, I let some of them go, uh, but it, it doesn't take over. And I think this seed packet says that it self sows in a welcome way. You know, sometimes plants that self seed are not welcome, uh, but this one doesn't tend to become like a, an issue. So it's got a really mild licorice flavor. So it's really good to use in teas. That's a really easy way to use it. And you can use fresh or dried leaves and flowers. You can uh, harvest branches and just let them air dry, hanging upside down, super easy to kind of process. I'm thinking, I'm gonna do a little bit more reading on it, but I'm wondering if I can make it into a tincture, but it's a really good one. Um, of course, do your own research before you start using this on, in a medicinal way, but um, it's been used for like coughs and fevers. Um, it's like got some antioxidant qualities. Um, it's been used for gastrointestinal things like bloating and diarrhea. Uh, asthma, ulcers, I mean, the list goes on and on. So anyway, I thought that this would be a really interesting one to start from seed because I've usually only uh, planted it from plants that I've picked up down at the garden center. And there's a lot of seeds in here. I already opened it because I wanted to know what size of tray to start with. We're gonna go an eighth of an inch deep. Oh yeah, oops, I just dropped a few. Tiny, tiny. We probably have enough to do a few trays but I'm gonna go an eighth of an inch deep. We're gonna do two seeds per cell or so. It'll probably end up being two to four uh, cause little seeds are kind of hard to meter out. Uh, but we're gonna go about eighth of an inch deep. We'll cover over them with soil and then we'll pop it into the studio so they can germinate in there. So I made a little well in each one of these. And I'm just gonna sprinkle just a few seeds in each cell. Now you can start these seeds as late as like March, if you want them to be ready to go out in May. But the hyssop is a pretty tough perennial in terms of temperature. So I'm hoping I can get these up and going, maybe even pot them up once and then put them outside and harden them off or put them in a cold frame. That way we can maybe plant them out a little bit earlier than some of our other things. Cause it's not like a petunia, like it can handle some cold once it's been acclimated. Boy, with this seed, you can barely even tell you've done anything. That's one thing about pelleted seeds I appreciate, because you can really see what you're doing. Still have a ton left. Now, if you want to find a variety that does not seed itself, look for uh, Blue Fortune as the variety name, and that one will not do that. It'll stay right where you put it. It's a beautiful plant. Um, this one, I can't remember how tall these grow. I wanna say, I'm trying to think of mine out there like two and a half to three feet tall is about where mine top out at, but I think they can grow up to four feet depending on if they like their conditions. They do like full sun and we should see some germination in one to two weeks on this thing. So I'm gonna go grab a dome. We're gonna mist it and settle all the soil in and we'll just put it under grow light. And that's it for this part of the project, so easy. It's also good we started in here because I needed these from one of our next projects. Ooh, 
Okay. Okay, these are set. Now, we don't actually have to have our grow light on. These seeds don't require light to germinate. So we'll just leave our grow light on until I start to see some action in there. The second I see any kind of green coming up, that light will go on. Also, really quick, um, the Mesto sprayer that I use that I really love, um, I've noticed a couple of you guys have one of these and you've been having a hard time getting it to spray. Um, there is, and maybe you've noticed this, but just in case you didn't, there is a little spot on the side, right about where my thumb is, that says max. If you fill the water up further than that line, you won't get it to spray very well. So if you fill it all the way to the top thinking, well, it's good to have it, you know, I don't know, all the way to the top, it'll last longer, uh, but actually won't pump up and create that air pressure. So anyway, just maybe check to see if that might be what's going on. And then just a real quick tour of the other seeds we've got going. These are Benjamin's beans. He needs to come out here and water them. We learned about all of the parts of the seeds and then we got these planted so that he could tend to them and watch them grow. And then over here, I just showed you our geranium trays, but here's another look because there's more action even since the last time. Keep in mind, I only planted one seed per cell because I usually have such good germination rate on these. And uh, I can see like there's a cell here or there that doesn't have any yet, but they may still show up. Still nothing on our echinacea so far. And if we have any fungus gnats show up, the kids and I decided to put our Venus flytrap out here. <laughs> I don't know if that would work or not, but seems logical. Okay, to the Hartley. All right, guys, so here's what we've got for the Tratoscantia. The ends of this plant look really good, but over time, the bottoms get kind of scraggly. There's some dead leaves, which, you know, we could spend some time picking all of those off, but then we would be left with kind of a scant looking center, which, you know, if you are looking at these from down below, they're awesome, but that's not the case with this one. This one I've got on the counter usually, and we look at it from more over the top. So I like to take this one and reroot it about once or twice a year. To do that, it's super easy. You just cut off the nice looking stem, like that right there. I'm gonna strip off the lower leaf, and then we're just going to bury it in this new soil, like that. I mean, it's so easy. These things root all along their stems. They're super easy to to get to go. I don't wanna say that I get 100%, um, you know, propagation right here, but I wanna say it's pretty close and oh my gosh, the sun's coming out. Oh, oh, I hope it stays out. This project shouldn't take us all that long and then we can get out into the flower beds. I mean, you don't even really need pruners to do this and most of the time you don't need a little stake, but it can be helpful sometimes to make your little hole in the new soil and pop the stem down in. That can make it easier sometimes. And I'm starting with fresh soil this time. Sometimes I just pop the ends off and stick them right back down in their soil if they haven't been in there too long. But I think I've used the same soil several times at this point, so I kind of wanted to start over. So this is our before shot. Let's get it done. look at those they look so much better you can see that I watered them in 
and they'll just take off. We'll just make sure that they stay decently moist for the first little bit while they're forming up new roots, but they get a lot of nice bright light right here in this spot and they tend to like that. It keeps them like really vibrantly col colorful. So I'm really happy about this. So I ended up using the original pot. I just poured the soil out and put fresh soil in. So anyway, I'm really happy about that. And we've got the other Tratoscantia called Feeling Flirty. There's Douglas right here. You can see this one has like the lavender color in there. It's so pretty. And I would root this one exactly the same way. Hi, Douglas. Hi, kitty kitty. <laughs> now we get to go outside and do some work. This is where we're gonna be working right now. This looked so different just a few days ago. I mean, you can still see we've got some piles of snow on the ground. Um, and it's still pretty soggy out here, so I'm gonna probably be a complete mess when I'm done, but I can't help it. I just am so looking forward to being in the flower beds again, and there's quite a bit that needs to be cut back. We've got the Firelight Tidbit Hydrangeas. There's three in here, and there's some uh, Russian Sage Echinacea, which, I mean, you can see what the winter interest of those looks like. So, so pretty. But with the temperatures coming this way, I don't think it's gonna to be too long before we start seeing some fresh growth. There's a Niagara Falls Panicum, that's that grass right back there. Uh, this is the Cat's Meow Nepeta. What a mess. This would have been a really nice one to have cut back in the fall, just to give you a look or an idea. I mean, that does not stand up near as well as like the yarrow right behind it. You kind of learn through the years, like which ones are worth it to clean up in the fall because they become kind of a matted down wet mess and what things really do thrive during the winter months. I mean, we had quite a lot of snow too and they're still looking great. There's another panicum, some Veronica right in here. Still has its leaves and looks really pretty. I mean, as far as a dormant plant goes, that looks pretty good. There's sedum in here that needs to be cut back. And then roses, I might hold off on those a little bit. And then we just started developing this little space last year. So we've got some Artemisia, that's the, the blue little grasses in here and there and some Veronica down the way. I can see bulbs popping up through the soil. See the little green shoots? I also see weeds, tons of weeds right now. I and mean, even if you're not comfortable doing your garden clean out, like cutting back perennials this early, just in case there's like a cold spell, or if you just tend to like to leave it till later, still can get out and pull weeds because boy, they start growing early. And if you get on them early, you won't have near the problem later on. Tools for this, we've got gloves, may or may not use those. I've got my twos, Falco twos here, my hedge trimmers uh, for perennial cutback, makes a quick job of it kneeling pad, rake, kangaroo pop-up bag. So just a quick look at how I cut these things back. Russian sage, I go in and cut it back pretty far. Kind of see right in there what I do. The hydrangeas, I'm not gonna cut back too far. I'm just gonna kind of cut underneath where the blooms are. And if you get in there, you can see where the nodes are. There's like some swollen spots on the branches. I cut right above one of those nodes. And you can wait until later in the season to trim up your hydrangeas when you can start to see the buds swell. That way you can tell exactly where they need to be pruned, like above a really solid looking set of buds. But I'm honestly, I'm tired of looking at these blooms and I really wanna get in here and I'm gonna thin out all of the puny looking branches too. Um, so we can create some more thicker stuff. Echinacea is a clear cut back all the way down to here. Oh, these leaves are gummy. So I'll just carry on like that on those. Cat's meow down to the ground. When I say down to the ground, that usually means like one to two inches above the ground. Maybe I should be a little bit more definite about that. Same with the ornamental grass. I will leave the Arctic Fire Dogwoods alone this year. Yarrow, inch or two above the ground. Same with our Veronica, same with our sedum. So I'll be using a combination of my Felcos and the hedge trimmers to cut all these things back. These I use like for the hydrangeas because I need to make more uh, precise cuts. And hedge trimmers, anything that needs to be whipped down close to the ground, hedge trimmers make quick, quick work of it. So anyway, here we go. <laughs>
My goodness you guys I am warm it is beautiful out here I mean the fact that we're able to be out here at this point in the season feels like a gift so it doesn't feel like work at all to be doing what we just did now I made it all the way to the stone walkway we didn't make it all the way past I just felt like it was a good place to stop kind of a clean break and the gator is completely full I need to go empty it the pop-up bag is also full so let's walk through what we just did looks very different than it did before but oh it's so fun to see the little spruces kind of popping through and really shining at this point now that there's not a bunch of scraggly looking perennials around them I went through the hydrangeas really cleaned them out this one was so thick full of like little wispy branches I could probably take more out too I always feel like you know when we're this early in the season if I can plug away like we just did today and then I can come back through and do some fine tuning later on once it's a bit warmer that would be even better. I did a light job raking in some areas, but I did not rake the whole thing. Uh, Russian sage cut back here, echinaceas cut back. The cat's meow nepeta was a total pain. Not only were they flopped over and matted down, but that was the entire season worth of growth last year. I did not trim them back after their first flush of blooms. I just kind of let them go and do their thing and they did awesome, but it made them extra thick. And there's like 16 or 17 of them in this area. It's quite the statement when they're in bloom. This is a Zafiro blue spruce right here. Uh, this one only grows eight by six, so a really fun size right here. And then I left the nine barks alone. There are three of them in here. Two on the edges are doing better than the one in the center. I don't know what the deal is there. Uh, but typically you wanna put those somewhere where you can just let them do their thing uh, because they kind of grow in a natural vase shape. And if you trim them, they don't ever really recover from that. 
There were a couple of daylilies I completely forgot were here. Got those cleaned up. Oh, it's starting to feel darker out here now. It's not super late. Uh, a few perennial geraniums I just kind of cleaned up in this area and cut back. Uh, you can see the Arctic Fire dogwoods. They are just so pretty. Look at these. Now you can go about trimming these in two different ways. So they're very brightest, best colors on first year wood, maybe second year wood as well. I just planted these last year. Uh, you can either go in every other year and cut them all the way back to the ground, let them grow back fresh, which they will. I mean, they're super fast to recover and then you'll have really fresh stems for a couple of seasons before you have to do it again. Or you can go in once a year and cut out a third of their old growth. And these are just looking so bright and fresh that I don't really want to do anything with them this year. We're just going to let them do their thing. And then next winter, we'll go in and I'll probably do the full shear back because it's the easiest way to handle it. Now, the only reason you wouldn't want to really go in every other year and cut them all the way back is if you're using them for an anchor piece in your garden or for like a hedge to hide something because it does take them a little bit longer to recover and you lose that size for a little while. If you do the every year and just cut out select branches, Branches, then you'll still maintain your hedge. Then all the Veronica and sedum down here. Now the roses, these are the Rise Up Amber Nest, so they can either be grown as a large shrub or a small climber. I'm growing them as a large shrub in here. Now I cut these back just to kind of clean them up a tad, but this is one that I will come in and fine tune as well. So I didn't do any thinning. I basically just came in and whoop, just kind of topped them all so that they weren't so out of control. So when I come in here later, we'll take out skinny growth in the center any competing branches will also take all the leaves off of them but the leaves do offer a little bit of protection even though i'm not super stressed about them um, so anyway that's the fine tune tune job we'll do later on those two as well this is a procumbens blue spruce and it was a lot littler when we planted it i'm so encouraged these will grow or this one will grow 10 feet wide and two feet tall so it's about max height right in here but I'm hoping to just kind of like help encourage it to go around the base of the roses I think it's got a beautiful icy blue color we had the smitten pink super bells in this space last year and those that color with that oh so pretty and then I did plant some cat's pajamas nepeta right in here toward the end of the season so they didn't have much growth I just used my falcos on those got those cleaned up and then that's where we stopped so I didn't do any of the stuff in this bed Although I think it'd take like 10 minutes to get that done. Not much in here. I'm excited though to continue, you know, developing these beds. This next year, that was a Serbian spruce we got for the pond area and it didn't end up going there. So this is where it is. I just wanted to walk this pathway just real quick and we'll run out to the tulips in the cut flower garden because so far, and I hate to even say it too loudly, but the squirrels haven't, haven't messed with the mulch out here. It's looking pretty good. I think the cats have probably used it a couple of times, but I don't see any holes. I don't see any bulbs popped out of the ground. It's just looking really good. Cannot wait to see what kind of color we get from this space. So you guys, that is gonna do it for today's projects. It just felt so nice to be out here and it feels like we can just keep doing this. I mean, based on what I'm seeing on the forecast, we do have like three days of rain, but even then, I even thought this morning, because we did get rain for about three hours this morning. I thought even if it's still raining this afternoon, I'm still gonna go out and get some work done. I don't care anymore. I just wanna get out here even if I get soaking wet and I want to work out here. <laughs> I'm excited for this gardening season. I don't know why. I just feel like a fresh, um, I don't know, motivation, fresh inspiration just excited. I think it's going to be great. And the kids are at such a great age. That's probably it. Like we don't have to watch Samantha with putting stuff in her mouth. She's older. She's more independent. We don't have to watch her, you know, every step. And it just feels like everybody can get out here and do their thing and uh, have a really good time. So I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Hope you guys are all having such a great day and a great week so far. And we will see you in the next video.